Hey guys, today we are installing a 10 by 28 tile. This is a ceramic. It's going in my custom shower. We're gonna install it vertical stack, which is inherent difficulty. Um, inherently difficult, I should say. Oh, I'm in trouble. I forgot something. My wife is gonna kill me if I don't put it in. Oh, I forgot. And we uh, got off lunch and we realized that we didn't have enough thin set. So we go to the store and Home Depot doesn't even have anywhere on the shelf, a non-modified thin set. No alternative, zero option. That blows my mind. If you're a homeowner and you're looking to do a custom shower for yourself, this would be a perfect tutorial. If you're a homeowner and you've hired somebody to do a bathroom and you just wanna know how is it done, you know, what can you expect from your tile guy? This would be a great video too, okay? Because we're gonna go through all of the challenges. I've got nothing square, I've got nothing level. I've got all the worst case scenario <laughs> for a tile guy. I've chosen to punish myself on this build because I'm, I'm going after a design. And whenever you choose design over function, you're gonna be in for a real process. So today, it's design over function. We're throwing common sense out and we're gonna make it pretty. Step one on any tile project is protecting that waterproofing membrane. Now, if you're in the tile business, I'd love to know what you guys use. I love buying a $2 cardboard box. <laughs> it's just a good investment, right? Like the last thing you wanna do is drop a tile or drop a tool because that causes problems. This is more of a safety device than a practical device because what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that as I'm working, I don't end up with a broken piece of tile in my shoe, okay? Or a screw as I'm walking through my job site. Or if I drop my tool, I don't want a penetration. As long as I don't see any penetration in the cardboard, I'm comfortable that the membrane's still in good shape. If for any reason I'm not 100% confident after I'm done tiling the walls, I will lift the cardboard out. I got Red Guard standing by. I can always paint another protection on the floor just to make sure that we're not gonna run into trouble. Now I'm using a variety of tools here today. I'm not gonna go through the whole list right up front. We'll just introduce you to everything as we go along. Um, this is just a scrap piece of vinyl floor. And I'm gonna be using it as a straight edge for marking my tile. I don't wanna use anything metal, <laughs> right? So I can put measurements on there. I can take this, I can take my marker and I can make my lines. Now, when I'm marking on my tile, I'm using a dry erase marker, okay? It stands up under the wet saw and it wipes off with your hand. So, it's a perfect match. Don't use the Sharpies. <laughs> Even if the tile has a gloss, sometimes the gloss will actually absorb a little bit of that marker and it'll leave the mark embedded in the gloss. And then you'll be really upset because you'll see little black lines everywhere where you <laughs> made your cuts. Let's get my tile in here and we'll have a look at what's going on. As luck would have it, I have some bare materials around here. Paint can, plus a half inch drywall, plus a laser line. Here's why. Right over here, guys, is another video where we did the tile on the whole wall. That's where my, my, my red line comes to. I am a good eighth of an inch above my grout line, which means I can use this line as my, my mark for where my first course of tile goes, okay? It's this simple. I just line that up, I mark this, I'm an eighth of an inch high there, I want a gap under my stone, so I'll mark minus a quarter. So I've got room to put in my shims. And I can just set all that through the, the table saw. Now, when you're doing a shower like this, you gotta consider the entire process. I have to do the entire base row and then I have to finish a wall because I have different depths, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm gonna start with a full tile from the edge, I'm gonna do a cut off, and then the off cut will come around the corner. It, it's a really nice look. <laughs> yeah, you don't wanna overcomplicate this, but what I have to do is I have to build this wall up because this is a different depth, which is gonna affect my off cut. And then I'll establish a grout line, and then I'm gonna mimic that grout line on this wall down here. So this is what I gotta go through, one wall, Figure everything out, don't be in a big rush, but 
the bottom corset tile, that's the killer. So I can't even do this cut until after I've built this wall up to this point and establish where this grout line is. Yeah, that's frustrating, but that's okay. We went ahead and measured off. All right, there's 27 and a half. That's my tile. Roughly here, roughly, bam. I'm starting another full tile here. That'll make the shower look really popping. And um, if I have a little bit of waste, it doesn't matter. So this will be a nice full tile. We'll start a full tile here. And then when I'm done, all the walls, we'll hit the bench and then we'll do the floor, okay? And then we're gonna tile um, this here and the outside wall. We're gonna work our way out, okay? That's my system. Let's just get into this. Okay. So first of all, I've gotta cut, make a notch to go over my curb. All right, there we go. And I wanna go nice and flush with this. All right. And everything in here, you can leave a little bit of mercy because everything is gonna get covered by another piece of tile. So you have the thickness of this plus the thin set to help cover all your, your cuts. So if you cut too tight, you're gonna be interrupting with some of the waterproofing and the membrane in the corners, okay? So that's all we're gonna do. I'm just gonna kinda half draw that in. That'll be tile number one. And that's where we begin, at the wet saw. All right, so I'm gonna wash my table down. We just finished the other wall the other day. And in my check, my water's a little low. So that's how that's done, all right? Now I can check my water level. Yeah, I'm almost at the max. I'm gonna throw in a little bit more clean water. <laughs> there we go. It's important to keep an eye on your water level as you're working. You don't want your blade overheating. When the blade overheats, it warps, and a warp blade will break off and chip. You see these little question mark cuts? These are laser cut relief cuts in the blade to keep it from overheating. Now you're gonna to wanna to wear safety glasses for this, not because a whole lot of the brief lying around, but because the, the water gets dirty and it has chips and it has little bits of ceramic in it. And if you get any of that in your eye, it's gonna hurt, you're gonna be in trouble. And we should plug it in. <laughs> How many times in this channel do I turn on tools that aren't plugged in? <laughs> there we go. Now there's water coming out of this, all right? It will get you wet, so stand to the side, not in front. That's that simple. Remember what I was talking about, that marker? Right? Just wipes right off. No big deal. Okay? Perfect every time. Well, right away you can tell that the coffee has not kicked in. I'm actually using this red line as a guide. <laughs> so my edge of my tile has to be just about a quarter inch below that. That makes it two inches. So I need to take off two inches over here and another two inches over here and make that adjustment. So I'm gonna go do that now. <laughs> Jeff's a genius today. All right, now the goal here is to stack the tile. So I'm gonna hold this trowel line here Hold this corner out, okay? Plus another eighth for thin set and for my metal. Yeah, right there, that's what I want. Okay, we're gonna create a system here where I'm gonna call this number two, okay? And then this piece here is number three. And then this will be number four over here as far as the stacks. Because I don't wanna get confused about my off cuts because I'm not building this for a little while, right? I can't even start this, I can't do this cut till after I build this wall up and get around here to get this grout line established. We're gonna do as much dry fitting and dry cutting as we can <laughs> because once you make your thin set, you're on the clock, right? It sets up. So we're gonna just start off here by going, I need a piece that's eight and a quarter. And then I'm gonna mark the surface of the off cut with a number three, all right? So I know that that's part of that row. So I can do this tile and this tile, and I can fit, do the whole wall at the same time, okay, and building and building and building. And then I'm gonna have a stack of number threes over in the corner somewhere. See how the mine is working? And then once I build this up, get around this fixture, get over here, I can establish where my grout line is for number three up here, okay? And once we've got that grout line established, then I can take my stack of threes I can cut it to that grout line, and then I can make number four and so on and so on and finish the bottom row. 
The goal here is the first pail of cement is to get up here, establish this grout line, finish the rest of the baseline so it has time to dry. So by the time I get later on in the day, I can pull everything out of the base, take off all my shims on the bottom row, and it's not going to sag. That way I can tile the floor as well as I'm working out of the shower. One more thing that we need to take note of is the design on this, these stones. If you get something like this, consider this. Here, I'm going to do the standing up like a grown ass man, all right? Here we go, check this out. This pattern is supposed to flow into the next one. Okay, now I got right side up. Make sense? Now you can see that lines up. And the other way it doesn't. Here's, here's not lining up. Not a terrible look, but at the end of the day, if the whole shower isn't cut properly and you have one that's facing the wrong way, it'll stick out like a sore thumb. Okay? All right. So, uh, there we go. <laughs> that is my side that I want. I've got to take two inches off at the bottom of this. I'm assuming it'll be about the same over here. Let's have a look. It grows. Okay? So I'm going to start with taking off two, I'll cut this one, and then I'm going to put a big three on this and start my stack. I'm dealing with a single slope floor, so everything's going in one direction, which actually simplifies a lot of the tile because I don't have to do an X cut, relief cut in the floor, right? Or use a little, little small two by two tiles. This is awesome. All right, two inch and then eight and a quarter. Having a dry erase marker means you can put your measurements right on your tile. I always write it down. When you're cutting tile, if you don't start the cut from the other side, when you do your follow through, it'll always chip off. I'm not worried about it because I'm doing my floor after and I'm putting in big stone. So it'll all be cut and covered. Now, because there's a slope, I have to wait until I get this piece installed before I know where my grout line is so I can cut measure from here, line this up with my new grout line, and then I can draw my slope out. So all we do with this is mark number three on it and set it aside. Now it's time to get some thin set going. I'm gonna be using two different thicknesses today. Again, here's one other issue that I have, is this drain system. The body of this drain sits on top of a, um, a rigid foam because it's a buildup system. So that down here in Florida, which is where this is, the, the code says that if you don't move the drain, you can add on to it and you can do your own plumbing, continue to finish up your shower. There's no building permit for that process. There's only a building permit if you move the drains. Anyway, this goes here, but I don't want it all the way back there. I don't want to fill this up with a half-inch grout. I'm going to use the half-inch trowel to get it closer to my drain body. So I'm going half by half. Here we go. And then I'm going to use the quarter by three-eighths everywhere else where I don't have to have the buildup. Save myself a few bucks. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's good. So now what we do is just get a bunch on the wall. We're gonna press the bottom in, and then we're gonna break it up past that red line, and then go back to the bottom with the excess, and fill it all in. That is a nice build out, very consistent. Pays to be really picky. All right, we're using a directional traveling technique so that all the lines are going the same direction. When I go vertical stack, I like my lines vertical because it allows me to set in my clip system and then everything always has something to bond to. Like we mentioned earlier, this is considered large format tile. Uh, anything over 12 by 12 should be treated like this. Yeah, the skim coat. And because we're in a shower, we want to look for 100% coverage. Code says something about 95%. <laughs> well, hell, if you're going to go 95, just make it perfect. I mean, all right. And that is one of the reasons why this takes so long to do. Making sure everything is absolutely perfect. So I'm going to line up a little bit short on purpose, set it, and then slide it out to my position that I want. That'll collapse all the ridges. we go push that in very cool very happy with that now we are going to attempt to use self-leveling clips on this all right 
because I am building out with so much thin set, I don't want this getting out of control. The way we do that is you clean and then you set. Try to find something where it's kind of flat. Okay, there we go. And we're going to put one on the side as well. It's already a good spot. Okay, and then we're going to get this one ready to roll. Same thing. Press and collapse the ridges. We're going to double check our line, make sure that we're happy with this. Now's the opportunity for me to fix anything that I don't like. There we go. Here we are. So my red line now is just, just above my tile. And this is almost perfect. I'll stick one under this corner here. Always easier. Or I should say it's better. <laughs> Not always easier. But it is better to uh, um, always cut with give yourself a little bit of room. Okay? If you need two inches, take off two and an eighth and then add wedges. Little tip with this, when you're using this, the direction that you're pushing that wedge is the direction the tile is being compressed. So if I put it the other way, I'm gonna open up my grout line. All right. And that's not overly tightened, or it'll break, but that holds that nice and, nice and flush. I'm liking that. Whew, at least the next piece is simple. <laughs> All right guys, so we're gonna just take a few minutes here and show you how to mix some thin set. Um, you know, if you haven't seen this yet, then this will be interesting. If you have, well, <laughs> just remind yourself, water first, okay? Uh, you're going to run about um, almost like a 50-50 blend of powder to water, all right? So, let's get started. And I'm mixing about a half a bag at a time. What I'm doing here, guys, I'm just throwing a few handfuls of powder in there. And I'll tell you why. One of the biggest challenges we have when we're mixing these thin, thin sets is the powder kind of collects. It has to be worked into the water. So if you pour it all in, it'll be sitting in a corner and it'll be, there'll be a dry spot in the pail even after you're done mixing, all right? So then you go to put it on the wall and you start scooping out dry thin set that hasn't been mixed properly and it won't adhere on your wall. So what we do is on slow speed, see this working through a big chunk of it there. We're just gonna create a mixture Right, right here. While there's lots of water and just a little bit of thin set, we're creating something here that's a little bit thicker than the water. So that when I pour the rest of this powder in, I don't really have as much problems with that bunching up in the corner mix. And I don't know why this works so well, I just know that it does. All right, <laughs> here we go. It's about as much as I can make with this mixing drill. And I'm using this because it's 60 bucks, okay? And you're gonna get these things as cheap as 20 or 30 if you go to Harbor Freight. And they're not as fun to mix with because they're sensitive, but they will get the job done. You don't have to go and buy a $200 mixing, mixing drill for tile if you're a homeowner. And there again, we're just slowly mixing it in. And it's way too thin to use, right? But it's nice and easy to mix, and that's why I do that. And we'll throw the rest of this. There we go. Just a little bit of powder. Okay. Now you'll see, what we're looking for is that, uh, that frosting effect. We lift it up and it should hold the peak. But you see how it's sagging? Right? Let me just clean this off a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna show you the finger test here, All right? Just go like this, and if it's sagging, okay, just, and it's barely holding the peak, that's perfect. And I'll tell you why. It's not good right now, but we have to let this sit for 10 minutes. And during that 10 minutes, the, all these chemical reactions go on, and I'll do another finger drag, all right? And you'll notice that it'll hold its shape. And that's what we need, because when we're using a half by half trowel, we want that thin set to hold its shape on the wall. We don't want it sagging down, all right? 
because we want to collapse the ridges when we install the tile. We don't want it just becoming one big saggy mess, right? Here we go. I'm gonna give that a few minutes and then we'll do another finger test and that's it. Okay, all right, so now we're back. We're 10 minutes later. This is our last chance that you have to add water to this and fluff it up if it gets too dry. All right, so let's take a look at this. And we'll do the finger test. We'll do it next to it. Here we go, see that? Look at that. All right, that's like walking through the Dead Sea right there. That is amazing. Starting off with that much standing power is almost a little bit too dry, all right? Just a little bit. So watch this. I'm not going to use a lot of water. This is like pancake batter. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit fluffier. Ugh. It's going to be a little bit loose right out of the gate. But like I said, we're going to give that a, just a couple more minutes. It should stiffen up while we start working. Uh, when I'm working with the tile, uh, if you're doing like just a lot of big tiles and you don't have cutting to do, then, then the way it was before was fine. But when you're doing lots of cuts, you need to have that extra clock time to get the work done, right? Here we go. Very important here um, when you're getting me around your plumbing fixtures. Almost every plumbing fixture has some sort of a face plate. Whether it's integrated or it goes on after the fact, just make sure you know the end from the beginning. This one, it just screws on afterwards, and there's two screws that go into the valve body, okay? That screw hole has to be exposed. Don't bury it behind your tile. It's really tricky to try to expose that after the fact, so make sure you're integrating that into your cuts. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh my God. Okay, so when I did the shower, I, I made this slope. I pre-sloped it so that the waterproofing has a water diversion system. But when I actually put my sill on, I'm gonna install it. Uh, the, this slope is more aggressive than the one I want on the sill. This one, the sill I want one degrees. Now look where that lines up. Okay, and I'm using a thicker stone for the sill. So this actually comes out pretty perfect. I might even, just because I can, and this is one of the benefits when you slope this, I built this with the stone in mind, right? <laughs> you can do this, right? You can go shopping for your design first and then you can build accordingly. So my tile is gonna come across here and I'm gonna have about a half an inch of cement. I'm just gonna fill it up. I'm gonna set my sill plate to overlap right on top so I don't have to do any cuts along the top here. That's thinking ahead and from the beginning, okay? I didn't get lucky. This is intentional. Always planning. And speaking of intentional, when you're doing your troweling, always trowel, you know, three, four inches further than you need to. Because then when I'm combing, I don't have to come back to where the joint is. I only have to come to here. So I'm not gonna make a mess all over my, my last tile. That's how you work clean, okay? Now, we gotta get the measurements for here. And because I have dry eraser, and I know the size of my wall plate, I'm gonna basically use that same dimension there. I just drew on that so you can see that it's obvious. Here we go. I'm gonna go 25, 23 and a quarter, 26 and a quarter. And I've gotta go up. I'm gonna measure to just above the screw hole to the tile, knowing that I got a little bit of a raise, okay? So I'm gonna go two and a half, two and five eighths. There we are. Okay, I'm gonna cut that out of the wet saw. While I'm out there, I'm also gonna get this measurement. I'm gonna go to 12. Perfect. Whoop, I'm out of tile. 12. <laughs> 12 inch piece. Resist the temptation around thin pieces like this to leave extra cement on it, okay? Yeah, a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's a small little piece of tile that needs help. No, if you put more cement there, you've changed the depth, and when you're pressing your tile, now you're gonna break it. So we're just gonna set this in place, like we have every other tile, a little bit to the left, and then collapse the ridges. All right. 
here we go. Trust the back butter. Trust the fact that you travel consistently in one direction and don't press on that piece of stone. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll, that'll, that'll be disappointing to go through all that work to get such a perfect cut. Success in tiling is all about having a system and not deviating from it. Repetition of the pattern every step you do. There we go. Okay. So because of the waterproofing build out, you get things like this. I got a nice little gap here. Opens up to about, I don't know, three eighths, maybe almost a half. But when you look at the top, this wall, it comes closer and then it curves and falls away. So at the very top, I'm out oh, a half inch to five eighths, which means every tile I put on this wall has to come close enough to here to close that gap. So I don't have any confidence that if I just add this tile and go, well, that'll be my line. If I do that, I commit to this, okay? All the way up. Now, what I'm gonna end up with is tiles that come, let me just get this leveled off a little bit. What I'll end up with is a tile that comes to here, but maybe the next one, it only comes to here. Whoa, well, this line has to be stacked. That's to be perfect, so slide it over. And then your gap over here from one stone to the next, it could be ridiculous, then, right? So we don't want to commit to that line now because we already know that it fades away, that wall fades away. If they both fade away, then there's not enough material to keep this line nice and true. So the solution is this. I'm taking my, my cutoff stone, okay? And I'm going to remove another half an inch to set up a new mark, okay? I'm gonna use my finger here as a guide. And I'm gonna cut, looks to be like about a half an inch. Now by removing this material now, I guarantee that if there's a little movement, I'll have enough material to get that grout line perfect. And use the shim as a straight edge. Don't bring metal tools around your, your tile as much as possible. And it just reduces the risk of chipping the glaze. All right, we'll get that cut and we'll start the next row. So now I got this one cut. Line number three, we'll get this one attached, establish our grout line, and then we'll start working at the base. Should be enough, eh? Yep. To be really quite rampy. <laughs> All right. Good. Now, where does that give me a line? <laughs> the um, laser level has a magnet on the back, so it can be held on the wall from a screw, which is awesome. So my laser line is one and five eighths, dead on. And that's too short, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a black line on my tile here. One and five eighths. I can make that bigger so you can see you guys at home. There we go. This into position until it's perfect. There we are. Got it. One thing we're not gonna do is we're not gonna have five different places in the shower where I'm working at the same time because the thin, thin set will skim over and the surface of it will go dry and that will not bond to the tile, all right? Yes, I've established my line, that's great. Let's try this now. We're gonna just, okay. I'm gonna take my shim and my black marker and I'm using the permanent marker this time. There we go. Whew. You know, might as well draw that in for the entire project. Right? That black mark becomes the grout line. So I'm gonna measure up to it. All right, here we go. Let's get the last one here. Ah. Now that that's established, I'm gonna focus on finishing one wall at a time, continue to put my off cuts in that stack for the third row. And then we're gonna measure back from the black line for every tile on this, uh, this side of the wall. Let's get to the ceiling. <laughs> Okay, I'll have another cut for you in a second. I'm, I'm tiling twice as fast as I would have on my own, just by eliminating all that walking back and forth. 
I do appreciate the hell out of it, let me tell you. Another 12 and a quarter. Okay. Just for everybody's information at home, this is a new flange cover. You want to take it out when you're doing this. Make sure when your cut is going to be covered. Delta, you can buy your trim kit separate from the valve body. So if you have a 30-year-old Delta faucet, you can buy a brand new trim kit. It'll still work on it. So get rid of the old junk and buy a new one. Get this little gasket seal on it, make some nice compressions, and then you will be rocking it. Nice, okay, so there's our finished look, plus compression, right? Okay, there you go, you beautiful booger. Right. The secret here is having the same amount of pressure on your compression every time. You don't want to over squeeze or it snaps it off, okay? A little bit of experience and you'll find your rhythm. There we go. I'm ducking on purpose because I know this is sticking out <laughs> and I don't want to catch it in the side of the head, right? One more quick trip. Um, make sure you keep these at least three inches off the edge, okay? Because the way we break these out is by we take our measuring tape with the rubber end and I smack it or use a rubber mallet. If it's too close, it doesn't have enough room to roll over and break off, okay? And it'll be in the way when you put your next row tile on. Now, on this particular job, whether or not it's a full tile of the ceiling or not doesn't come into play. Oh! <laughs> Oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I forgot something. My wife is gonna kill me if I don't put it in. Oh, I forgot. Oh, nuts. I was having too much fun, I got excited. Uh -oh. Accent tile. Uh -oh. Okay, so, accent tiles do not go this far up if it's only one band and I, she will kill me if I try to get away with that. So, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna disassemble, clean off the thin set. I'm gonna put it in where it's supposed to go, about eye level, okay? Perfectly, that's kind of normal, but it's also a step up. So, yeah, we're gonna go here. God, I have to pull off all that? I'll go there and only pull off one row. <laughs> Yeah, life just happened. All right, and trust me, you don't want to be the guy that says, oh honey, I forgot it. Don't worry, it looks fine without it. She will make me tear this all off. Oh, I know she will. Glad I realized it now and not <laughs> three hours from now. <laughs> the reason I remembered now is I'm sitting here looking at this going, Oh, I need about two inches to clear that. And I'm like, oh, two inches. Crap, I know what's two inches. That accent tile was two inches. Good news is, now I can show you what it's like to cut glass. When you're doing an accent tile, one of the secrets, buy the same thickness of accent as your stone. So everything lines up really nice as far as flush is concerned. All right. You know I dodged a bullet. That was in a place that was really safe for the tile. <laughs> that was a big mistake. And the reason this is so important is this tile is the color that works off of the accent in this stone that's going to go underneath. So it has to be here. Hit me up in the comment section if you've ever done something and a spouse, your partner, your friends, your family, whatever, if they ever caught you red-handed doing something stupid like what I just did. And find, I want to know, did they make you take it all off <laughs> and start over? There we go. Let's get a measurement for this. Uh, we're going to go four and an eighth.
That's the factory. That's actually really good. Okay. Now, underneath to here, seven and three quarters. Right underneath. Okay. Left to right. Underneath. What I'm doing, I'm gonna we'll go outside and I'll do this cut with you, Lee. I'm taking this, it's my top and my bottom, my two sides, okay? Now, I got two options for this. I can cut a square because I know I have a plate that goes over top, or I can check to see my hole saw kit is gonna be big enough. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the perfect cut. Okay, I got a little bit of wiggle room on that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw this in my drill. I'm gonna bore the hole. And I'm going to just place that inside those little black lines. All right, let's go get that done. The secret here, because there's no pilot hole on these, is you have to hold it on the side where you want to start your hole. Go nice and slow. That's my location right there. Okay, now I got a good groove. I want to start rolling it about a little bit to my left, actually. How's that looking? Looks to me like I'm gonna finish up a little high. So I'm gonna bore it towards me now. That's better. Okay. Well, that's where I measured it. Let's find out if I can measure. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh yeah, okay, that's gonna work out famously. <clears throat> Those plastics, nice and tight to this tile, and then we'll slide a little bit to the right to collapse the ridges. Check our sin. Yeah, we are in good shape. Okay. All right, that job is saved. Whew. Now, I don't wanna make my wife to sound like some sort of a villain in this story, but guys, you all know, once the lady has told you to do something, it's not her job to remind you. <laughs> and the lady wants what she wants, and it's my job to give it to her. Here we go, this is good. I'm gonna finish this off. Now, and then we're going to finish the rest of the bottom row so that this afternoon at the end of the day I have enough time and everything's dry enough I can pull my wedges and get this floor in. This is the goal. Tile this whole shower in one day. This cement has been with me now for a little bit. I mixed this one about an hour ago and it's already setting up. A little stiffer than I would like but it'll still bond well as long as I do that back buttering technique. So we are gonna measure from the tile to the ceiling where we expect the tile to make contact. That is a perfect eight. So we're gonna go seven and seven eighths, leaving an eighth at the ceiling for a silicone seal. Same thing, that's nice and straight. Okay, that's the right marker, okay. 12 and 3 eighths again, nice. That'll work. So for everybody who's like, Jeff, what the heck is the vinyl flooring for? It's right here, my straight edge. I don't need a long ruler, I don't need a metal level. I don't want anything that can chip glaze. It's a part of my assembly. Now that's my rip for the ceiling. <laughs> that's much nicer. Yeah, I had to throw the rest of that thin set out. It was just, uh, standing a little too long. When you're building a design like this, you have to be very precise. Sometimes less is more. Oh, I hate throwing that stuff out, but. Okay. I'm so good now. 
I am not taking any chances. I'm going to find a surprise the next day that's bled through. So I'm going to just wipe it off now, okay? Now, now that the wall's done, we're just going to take a minute with a wet sponge, top to bottom, remove any excess thin set that's sitting on the surface of the tiles. Because why let it dry there and then you have to fight with it later? Here we are. I mean, you can see how much resistance it gives you just from setting up for the last 30 minutes. You don't want to wait till tomorrow to wash this stuff off. I mean, it'll work, it's just, it's a lot harder. We're never gonna have enough trouble dealing with these little blobs of uh, packaging material here to keep the tiles from getting scratched up. And that's all it is. Okay, now we can finally get back to the first part, and that's finishing off all the base. Okay, so we're just trying to keep an eye on our patterns here. Okay, make sure we're consistent. This piece goes here, all right? So first thing we gotta do is get our length. So we're gonna set that up against the stone here. Okay, and we're gonna draw in where our cut is. And that is really, really specific. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, because it's upside down, we can't trace that horizontal line. We have to go this way. This cut goes in that end over there. So in order to measure the bottom that we cut, we have to kind of go this way, right? But I can't get in there. So I'm gonna use a measuring tape. I'm gonna measure. Oh, we'll go from here. And we're gonna give ourselves a little bit, of, little bit of mercy here, okay? So I need something, we're gonna go seven and a half. All right? And then we're gonna measure from the top down to cut the bottom off. So it's seven and a half. And I'm gonna measure from here at the black line. And that one is seven and a half dead on. But remember, there's a slope cut from the top. Sorry. And I'm gonna take a little bit more off because I wanna have wedges. If I cut it too perfect, I don't have the ability to maneuver, okay? So here we go. That's actually long enough on the tile. That's really handy. Okay. And then we're gonna cut that line. Consistent right there. All right. Now we're gonna start at the bottom with a third row. And that, that's gonna look absolutely perfect. We can take number four and start working on this one, which is too long. <laughs> okay, I liked trying to remember to keep this happy face on the top left corner. So I'm gonna turn this upside down so I can get my inside corner measurement, my mark, all right? And I'm gonna go here on this side of that line. All right. <clears throat> We'll find out what that measurement is. We're gonna go with 22. And then just to make my life easy, if I can, I'll take my vertical here. I'm gonna see how, how this line is. If it's very, oh, that's not terrible. What if we were to move it out a little bit? Give ourselves a little mercy. We fit right to the top. Just a little bit more mercy. And we'll have enough space. There we go. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tiles at 22. Now it's going to be a little bit. Nine at 22. There we go. That makes this process a lot faster. Here we go. Now this one goes right here, right? I've got the uh, body, flange body in the way. So we're going to put a couple of notches in there so it'll sit right on top of that. Sit right in the body. And that'll be amazing. Okay. Now here's all my offcuts. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That is perfect. Oh, I love it when a plant comes together. All right. So where's my cut? There it is. Drop our line on here again. We're going to just measure. We're going to go seven, three-eighths. And then over here, we're going to go seven and an, almost dead on, seven and a sixteenth. Okay? And it is lunchtime. My body is screaming at me to eat. Here we go. Okay. Whew. Oh, sh. It's not what I asked you to do, but. <laughs> Ah, oh, 
ready for thin set. That's awesome. Now the job begins of finishing off this bottom row. And then we can have lunch. And then uh, all of this will be setting up in the next few hours. Hopefully by 4 o'clock we can have the rest of the shower done. And then we're going to be putting in the floor. We got some little bit of buildup in that corner from all the waterproofing measures. Just got to take off, take off a rounded edge there. Hey, you can't cut straight tile because all of these corners have got, it's kind of like doing drywall work, right? All right, scribe as we go. back this way. Got to make another modification here. That's too bad. All right. Ah. <laughs> and it's the little details, eh? Gets you every time. Okay. Ah. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to stick one of these under here just so that I know it's supported by more than just the cement. There we go. So this is how I want my stones in. I'm going to invert it. Mark my cutoff here. Just push it in the corner. Give myself a little bit of mercy. I'm cutting it long on purpose because all that waterproofing. So that'll be my cut mark. But then we'll cut that straight. But in the bottom here, I'm actually going to just round out that edge a little bit. Okay. So I'm looking at my, my line here, I'm going right up that wall. That is the only straight corner in the whole house. And that's great for me, because that means, that means absolutely nothing. <laughs> we're going to do this the same way we were on the bench as we did on the first wall. I have to put this in, I have to build this up, I have to get all the way over there, find out where the back wall cut is, and then move that grout line onto the front face of the bench. <sighs> this is where I realize defeat. I'm going to cut that one in and just work until I run out of thin set. And then I'm gonna take lunch because I'm starting to get hangry. And I don't like that. My experience, the thin set is setting up in about an hour, maybe even two. And you know, you, you have it in the back of your head, it's about six hours before you can carry weight. But the worst case scenario is I don't get a chance to finish all of the tile in one day. It's not a big deal, right? You only move as fast as you can move. In a lot of cases, a tile shower like this could take two days to do. The important thing, is to have a process that makes it perfect every time. Because Lord knows I'm not. Let's go six and seven eighths. And then over here, I am six and a half. We'll take another eighth off of that. Okay. Why do I feel like that is messed up? Yeah, it's it keeps turning off today. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, six and a half. I marked five and a half. Man, I really do need to eat. Okay.
there we go. <laughs> There's money in the bank. Right there. Can I get a 19 and a half, please? Actually, 19 and 3 eighths. I should come out a little bit more. I have room to put that on or I'm gonna have a grout line issue. Okay. that interruption today it's taking me off schedule now it's impossible for me to finish this job today yep that's just not gonna be high enough right here okay I just need you to do this take that half inch off okay perfect thanks buddy all right well if we're gonna run out of thin set we're gonna run out of this set. But not for a lack of trying, we're gonna to try to get this done. Rip a half an inch off of two tiles. Well, you can get your own actually. <laughs> Leave these ones here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. This is handy. Lunch is here in five minutes, so I'm just going to do some vertical stacking here to use up this thin set so that I can take a break. Might have been too ambitious. tile there 21 and almost a half an inch is off the tile here and chances are it's because the level was in the wrong position and it's drawing a line like that not like that 21 21 and a quarter and 21 21 21. Yep, yeah, I'm going with that. There we go. I'm just going to use my level as a straight line. Come on, how do you get in the right spot? Okay. All right. So now we know what to do with this tile. This one is going to be 21. Measuring left to right. So that the grout lines line up. Okay. 21. How much thin set do I got left? No. I'm only gonna get one. I made a mark on the on the tile on the top.
All right, to get my first metal in. Here we go. Now it's time to add the first metal of the shower. Florida ceiling established, 91 and a quarter. All right, let me go get the tools and we'll get that cut. Chrome finish. <clears throat> okay. So there's more than one way to cut these things. One of the easiest is just a little wiggle. Gives you a nice clean finish. If you do too much of an aggressive bend, it make, distorts it a little bit. That is a great way to get that done. All right, and that should fit right on there. Perfect. Okay, so. I like to do this a little bit differently. I just like to load it all up. The reason I'm doing a few to get started, I really want this to be offset from there a little bit. Don't need back buttering in this scenario if you have enough cement pushing through, but it never hurts just to make sure you're gonna get a bond, right? Okay, here we are. There we go. Okay, we're gonna open up a 16th here. So we have somewhere for grout, a little proud. Okay, to guarantee we can shove the little tip in here. The only thing I need now is to finish off this section here. All right, well, I'm gonna stick in one, one or two more tiles, have my lunch, and when we come back, we'll start building the rest of this structure. And we'll see what else we can learn along the way. And we're gonna be able to install our floor tile finally. That's gonna be exciting. All that to get that, eh? <laughs> Safety first. Can't see a damn thing. <laughs> So as long as I've been doing this channel, I've been sharing information like always work clean as you go because life happens. Sometimes the phone rings, something interrupts yourself and I got interrupted for lunch and we uh, got off lunch and we realized that we didn't have enough thin set and we needed to make more before we could move forward with the project. So we go to the store and Home Depot doesn't even have anywhere on the shelf a non-modified thin set, no alternative, zero option. That blows my mind because they sell a Red Guard uncoupling mat and they sell Red Guard and in, they need to have non-modified thin set to apply over those two products. Like it's, it blows my mind. They've got nine kinds of other modified thin set. But you understand the science. Whenever you've got a waterproof membrane, it means it's not absorbing any of the water that's in the thin set, okay? So there's two kinds of curing processes. One, which is the modified, it's like a glue, and the water needs to leave in order for that product to set up and be strong. The other type of product is non-modified, and it is actually stronger the longer it stays wet, okay? It's a better installation. And because I, waterproofing means there's no water is leaving, and large format tile means there's no surface area for the water to evaporate, it stays wet really long, and it gets really, really, really strong, which is what you want in the shower. I'm just blown away. Home Depot didn't have it. Lowe's didn't have it. What in the world are you selling products that require a specialty cement for if you're not going to supply the specialty of cement? You're setting people up to fail. You're literally having them come to the store and then you're going to sell them cement that's guaranteed to destroy the work they're putting in their home. You need to go back out onto your floor there, managers, and look at your product. And if you aren't selling the thin set to go with these products, then don't carry any of it. I'm just blown away. I even called the local tile supply store and they don't even have any. I'm like... Am I the only guy in the world that knows that you need non-modified cement to do a shower? I'm going to have to drive an hour to Orlando, back to Florin Decor, who carry the right products for tile installation. Cheers to you guys. Would you open up a store in Leesburg, please? <laughs> like, in 10 minutes? <laughs> uh.
So because I'm working in a small space, I'm gonna uh, do this in reverse. I'm gonna leave my collapsible ridges on the tile and just back butter the wall. Okay, same thing, only different. So guys, here we go. Um, a couple of quick tips here for cutting these slope pieces. And then we're gonna do the bench, we're gonna do the sill plates, okay, and the floor for the shower. When you're in a corner, you got a slope going up to the right, use the left side of the tape to make your measurement. And in my case, I actually have a metric. <laughs> All right, now I got 50, 52 millimeters in the, in the corner here, but it's gonna be lower as it slopes down. So I'm gonna move over here and take a second measurement, I'm 55. So that's three millimeters for the thickness of the stone difference, right? So that makes it about 48, 49 in reality. And the truth is, is I want to have a couple mils off. So let me go, I'm going to try to go 47. And when you try to be this exact, it is going to be really frustrating. So realize that at the top, you're going to have a gap. It's okay. So here we're going to go 138. Again, I'm using the dry erase markers because they're amazing. <laughs> and then this tile is going to be different. This one's going to be 140. And then over here, I'm going to measure off that corner this way so I can get a closer representation. We're going to go to 200 on this one. All right. So just make all your measurements, write them down on their tile, use your dry erase, make this really quick and simple. And then we can use our piece of vinyl flooring to connect the dots on the tile. So I know my Left to right is 22 and a quarter. And I know this one's 14 and 5 eighths. And here are my two dots. Draw my line, slide it through this wet saw, Bob your uncle. I'm just a little bit freaking snug here, but you know, I'll take snug to fill in in a gap any day of the week in the shower. Last piece to confirm, right here. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, this is nice. Right into the corner. Get past that goop. Consistent. There we go. Beautiful. Here we are. Sponge in here. And this is why you want to paint all your surfaces first before you tile. On your jobs, don't paint last because you can actually wipe this stuff off. Okay, not an issue. All right, there we go. That's pretty close. Now, when I go to grout, you know, we're going to be in really good shape. Because, like, if you don't put enough cement there, it'll just fall in to the hole. There we go. There we are. There we go.
Okay. Ah, let's go do the bench now. <laughs> the secret to doing the bench is this. You're gonna need an edging on along your tile. So the first thing you do is you cut your edge. You want it to be pretty damn perfect, right? Like we're gonna call that 30 inch. And then we'll do a dry fit. Now for the bench, I like to use plastic and I don't like to use the metal. And I'll tell you why. Um, the metal's just always cold. So when you go to sit down, it's cold on your legs. Like generally in a shower, you're pretty exposed. <laughs> so for me and my money, I like to use the plastic, plastic in the wherever I'm going to be sitting and metals wherever I need durability. And this plastic is a really hard plastic, so it's more durable than you think. All right, there we go. Got a nice straight clean edge. Let's see if this thing fits. Oh, just gold. Okay. So we're going to install that right away first. Okay, here we go. By installing this first, we have a reference point to measure from, which is going to be huge important for us. All right. Now, we don't need to have much in the way of a, a ridge here to, to break down. We just want to set it. And you're going to see that that little that corner of the bench there is sitting just a little bit higher than the rest. So I'm just beefing all this up. I'm going to set this down. Just gonna set it in with my fingertips. Okay. Now I'm perfectly fine to have a, a grout space here. As long as I can get it consistent. And I'm gonna go with a wedge sideways here. So I can maintain a consistent gap all the way along while my thin set is setting up. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. I want to make sure that it's not sticking out further than the tile. Beautiful. So now we got something we can measure from. Okay. Now we got to talk about how we're going to do this, right? We're going to be going this way. You see this? Now this shower is incredibly not square. <laughs> the walls in this room are kind of like bent. So if I go flat on this wall, I go into that corner and I'm out of square. So let me just give you an idea what this looks like. That's a line. That's a line. Look what happens here. That's a line. It's close. So if I add the right grout line with this tile, I should be able to get this in alright. Let's see what we got. Measurement wise is just under 30. And then over here, we're just under 30. These are almost 10. They're a quarter inch shy though. So three tiles with a quarter inch grout line gives me quarter, 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 quarter. That's a full inch and I don't need that much. I just need the three quarters. So when you need three quarters and you've got four grout lines, all you do is you do the math up to, I need three quarters divided by four. So I need less than a, I need less than a quarter. I need three eighths. I'm just going to double this. So if I go a quarter, three sixteenths, sorry. I got I to gotta take that times four. I need four pieces. So three sixteenths. So three sixteenths is three, six, nine, 12 sixteenths, which is three quarters. That works. All right, so we will intentionally go with that grout line. We're going to intentionally not try to line up any of these lines. We're going to go here. Okay, square off that wall, square to here, square to there. We're going to add a three sixteenth grout line. And so my longest piece of tile is actually right to here. Let me just draw this on the wall here. There's the edge. Okay, so now I can measure that. This one I want to bring it in and leave a gap at the back. 
right? So that's my tile edge. I want to have a gap right before it and a gap on the back. I'm going to go 14 and an eighth. Okay. And that should be my longest part. 14 and an eighth on the back side. Wow. 14 and an eighth, eh? All right. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start at 14 and a quarter. All right, and then we will dry fit and then make any scribes that we got to do from there. All right, here we go. We want to see that bubble just passing the line. Because the line, when it hits, hits the line, it's one degree off. And just over the line, it's like one and a half, maybe two. And I prefer that. So that's my system. When the bubble just crosses the line. And then all I do now is I just get a little bit of pressure in there. Make sure that everything is bonded and then clean your grout line so you got somewhere to put grout. You don't want that to be thin set. It's worth saying over and over and over again, right? Okay, now we're going to push this in. We're going to maintain our grout line. Okay, so what happens here is this gets filled with grout. This plastic edging is comfortable, it's not, not cold, right? And then this tile is sitting higher than the plastic, but just a hair. And that's okay, because the grout will then round that in and fill it in, and it'll be a very natural soft corner. We'll get all of these in as fast as possible. <clears throat> okay. Keep bringing our 3 8 space that we're talking about. Three sixteenths, sorry. Okay, very good, we'll just dry fit this, don't put it in backwards Jeff, there we go, okay, now you can see the effect of this crazy angle in here, right, so we're going to start tight in the back corner, we're going to let the grout and then our silicone bead do the cover up on this. So in this case, my silicone will have to be pretty significant, but it'll, I'll keep it consistent. Biggest issue here is right here. Making sure that all three of these pieces of tile are flush and have the same gaps in the front, same grout lines. There we go. All right. And then we'll just clean up after I mess. <laughs> All right, guys, well, here it is. This is a uh, basic, what do they call it, uh, white marble? Okay, that's pretty pure white. Uh, they carry these things in slabs over at your local building store, okay? So uh, really easy. They make a really nice shelf. They don't have grout lines. They don't have all the messing around. And it overhangs your tile wall, so you can get a silicone bead underneath to keep everything nice and watertight. So wet saw works on this, no problem. You don't need any specialty tools. Just line it up and go. Because of the nature of the nuances of the uh, angles in this house, I'm doing a dry fit and I'm probably a little bit large, but I just wanted to be able to set it in the corner and get an idea of where I needed to trim up. So let's go see what we gotta do to make this fit perfect. Okay, so I cut it a little bit long for a reason. Now we got this protection. Now check this out. That gap is pretty consistent, which means that that wall is probably somewhat square. But over here, you can see that it goes from zero to hero. Okay, so what we're gonna do, hold the marker against the wall. All right, then we're gonna co cut that off, and then we'll be able to set this in place and thin set. Okay, so we just wanna get rid of all these spacers. All right, and then we're gonna fill this with cement. It's a big void at this point, so uh, no sense trying to set stone in a void. We don't want to use a dab system, right, on the marble. We want to have this filled right up and then put a trowel line on the marble. Don't ever go this far to then try to find some, a simpler way to do it. This is gonna take a little bit of abuse. It's gotta carry some weight. 
Okay. Let's just get her full. Loving it. And because we're using a big piece of marble sill, we don't need to use any edging here, which is marvelous. And because we already sloped everything underneath, all we gotta do is set this sill in nice and level on a half inch ridge, and then press the front down. And we'll be guaranteed we got a good, guaranteed we got a good slope. All right, we can do an actual dry fit here. Very nice. Now there's gonna be an overhang, and that's fine. So I'm not trying to get it all pretty right to the front of the sill here, okay? There's gonna be lots of extra material squeezed out anyway. There we go, that's a good rake. We'll squeeze out that. We'll clean up the extra after. Let's get this set in here. Using one little middle finger. There we go. That's high. Good. And you see when I hold it flat, again, we're just past that line, so it means we're sloping out. Okay, again in here, watch your grout lines, okay? I know we're going to silicone that afterwards, but it's nice to not have anything in the way when you come back to do your grouting. All right, now let's move on and prep to lay this floor. Because everything is a, a parallelogram means that for best results, you start on a flat surface and you pretend it's square. And then you can build a row and then get all your measurements after that. I don't want to try to start in a corner and kind of identify where the slope is. That could be absolutely devastating. I'm just going to comb some of this out, and I will show you our product. Okay. Here's the product. It comes on a sheet, on a cardboard backer. Okay. Now look at all those wonderful grays and blues, and look at that accent tile. And now you'll know why we put that on the accent on the wall. And when it's wet, it's a lot nicer. <laughs> All right, now it comes with a relatively straight side. Okay, so we're going to just start with that. And that one's a kind of a perfect for that corner. Anyway, I want to have a nice ridge there to set all that in. Okay, there we go. Bam. No sliding around with this one. Uh, I'm gonna drop it in. You set it with the float. What you'll see is the cement comes through all of that mesh and it bonds, but it doesn't push through to the top of the stone. Because we use the right thickness, we can now grout and we aren't gonna have a mess on our hands, okay? That simple. Now, all we gotta do from there is measure coming this way, Run that on the wet saw, and then fill all this in. Nice and simple, guys. I can't tell you how easy it is to work like this. Just make sure you clean all the extra out. And because it's a, it's a, you, you don't want to have a whole full quarter, just flatten your trowel a little bit. Get rid of the extra cement. And clean this out here, because I don't want to have big dollops of concrete next to my stone when I go to grab it. 
is we're going to be cutting our little bit of a wall tile as a, as a face on this side of the curb. All right, so you do that afterwards. So you can give yourself a little bit more mercy here. Okay, so we're going to measure 15 and 3 quarters, 15, 3 quarters, 15, 3 quarters. I'm going to cut 15 and a half on the next sheet. Now let's see if that works on this material. Yeah, so that's going to be a permanent line. So even dry erase marker, this stone definitely needs to be sealed. Okay, Whew. let's run it through the table saw. Yeah, now we know why that stone was so cheap at the store. <laughs> it has to be sealed. That's good. We'll put that in the in the video along with the rest of the grout work because we're going to use different grout on the wall than we do on the floors. sand that little corner down at the very end. There we go. Now generally this material, if you hold the four corners, it, it acts more like an A sheet. There's the sweet spot right there, I think. Okay. Now, just to be sure, I'm gonna grab another sheet. These are designed to work together in harmony. And we wanna make sure that we got this corner here looking proper okay so yeah it's not right okay let's just have another look here real quick oh for god's sake one of the stones fell off Shit. okay here we go so i'm gonna look at that i'm like this stone here is sticking further out than that one Okay, let's just take a look at it over here on the on driver or ground. Okay, put this up against a straight surface. Here we go. Yeah, they're almost perfect. All right, so what we want to do is go like this. Yeah, that's pretty perfect. All right, I'm going to go with it. Um, <laughs> The secret here is going to be, don't have this sheet um, start here and overlap, right? Or maybe we will. If we can do that on purpose, that might be nice. Pants the butt to work with here. Yeah, I can get a full sheet on that floor. So I'm going to go ahead, finish troweling that. Let's solve this equation right now while we're thinking about it. Yeah, 15 and a half again, almost. Next sheet, we'll cut 15 and a half again. Oh, what a pain in the ass. It's up against the stone, and we're gonna translate onto the tile. And then I'm actually gonna cut a little bit more myself a grout line okay every one of these stones leftovers we're gonna just peel them off take them from off cuts and fill in the gaps on the other side nice thing about the grout that we're using for the floor it fills gaps as small as 1 32nd up to half an inch and so since the tile is not a half an inch thick no matter what kind of position we see 
this grout is going to be able to bond and sustain itself without cracking. And it's going to blow your mind, but that technology exists. Here we go. Now we're just going to do our own thing here with this stone. There's no rhyme or reason how any of this goes in. Yeah, I'm going to go small first. Here's that wedge. Big piece here. These are all monsters. Here's some small ones. Here's a couple of options here. This is important to keep an eye on, okay? It's one thing to wash the uh, little bit of this grout off, after, cement off after the fact. It's another thing to have it sitting so raised around the stone that you can't grout. Because you don't want it showing through. Because when you wash your grout back, if your cement was sitting too proud, you wash the grout right back to your thin set. And this is going to be a different color. And then I'm going to get spots. Okay. Here we go. So, this is the sheet that comes with the tile, and it covers all of the extensions of it, okay? So, we're going to just, yeah, we're going to go like this, and we're going to kind of make a template of this area, okay? And then 15 and a half as well. There. There. Okay. All right, here we go. So I'm going to put this across that edge, bring that over to here. All right. Here's my cut line. Piece of cake. And here's the one we cut from the template. Set it on the other stone. Slide it into position. Just lift these. Bam. Okay, now that is not sitting as nice as I would have thought. Hmm. Yeah, like as if the world is not going to be that perfect for you, right? <laughs> All right. I got more of this stone than I needed because I wasn't sure if I was putting it in a bench. from my crease going that way, just under 16. There we go. That'll work. And that'll be that piece. Counterbalance with the leg out. There we go. Now, the only challenge I've got here is getting thin set in that little gap, the thickness that I need it. All right, so, a straight edge here. What I don't want to have is so much thin set on there that it makes a huge mess, right? tile will be complete. Okay. Whew. 
Woo, we have a floor. Okay, all right, we're back at the shower the next day. The step is really simple. The wedge creates a compression, so when I hit this, it has to break way deep in behind the tile. It's not even hard, okay? You could bring your kids in here, give them each a rubber mallet, and let them go crazy. <laughs> Maybe not, but you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a little harder in the corner because they roll over and get stuck. But the same concept, all right? The part that breaks off is about a quarter of an inch inside the grout line, all right? So there's, there's nothing here protruding. This lash system is actually pretty good. Now there are guys out there and they're gonna be like, oh, I don't like the lash system. I'd rather use the twist ons or whatever. Yeah, the ones with the wheels, they do a better job, right? So if you're looking to be really, really picky, then go find yourself a tile supplier or order them on Amazon. I think you'll probably get them there. I'll put a couple of links in the video description for different systems. I've used uh, five or six different ones in my career. And you know, they all did pretty much the same thing. They, they helped you to avoid the lippage, and that's great. But the goal today, before I finish installing the rest of my tile, and you'll notice that I messed up. When I did this wall, I forgot to put my yellow clips and level it off. And I left thin set up here in my rush. So I'm gonna have a, actually that's, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> I gotta clean that up. But the goal here today is to get the rest of the tile installed. Here we go guys, so here's a little bit of thin set. On a glazed tile you're okay. Try to, lots of control, don't chip right through into hitting the next tiles when you're using these tools. I like to use a real flexible four inch putty knife to clean my stone off. All this little powdery residue. Just to show you, you can actually follow the contour and clean all this stuff off pretty well. We're gonna wanna do this and really vacuum this place when we're done, right? Now, there's one other way to pull this off instead of doing it dry, and that is wet with a sand, with a, with a, see, wet with a sponge, right? Because at the end of the day, metal tools can mark up your glaze. So, let's try with water and we'll see how that effective is. This is why you want to use the sponge, not the tool. All of these materials that they use are water soluble. So you can literally wash your tile one at a time, making sure that every speck of the backer and your thin set is removed, even in your corners. A little bit of thin set here, okay? You wet it and you rub it a few times because the thin set is also water soluble for the first week or so. And that is why we're doing this. Now, remember when I was doing the tile job, I encouraged you all to work as clean as possible because this is a real pain in the butt and it's tedious and you have to do it before you grout. So sometimes just washing your tile work down takes longer than grouting. It all depends on how clean you are while you're working. Be methodical. One tile at a time, one row at a time. Okay, so you don't miss anything. Because uh, if you miss any of this and you start grouting, then you're gonna get chunks of this in your grout and you're gonna get dabs of white dots or dirt or whatever in your grout. And usually when you find the dirt, it's just after you grout it and you go back to wash, to take the haze off <laughs> and then you uncover it in the grout. It's Murphy's Law. You always find your dirt after you do your wash of your grout. So <laughs> it's easier to get rid of it now. Guaranteed it's not going to be part of the problem. So here we have a little bit of thin set. It's right on the edge of that tile. So I'm just going to use my 5-1. Slowly, gently scratch that out. Okay. You want to have nice open gaps. So if you're trying to be meticulous, now is the time to do it, okay? Be meticulous now so that when you grout, you aren't gonna be exposing dirt and chunks of cement and all this other stuff later. Because when the grout is setting up, is not the time to be trying to clean anything either, right? Uh, so then you're gonna grout and then you're gonna be polishing. Oh, and then you're gonna have to dig dirt out and then you're gonna get some grout that you haven't used yet and you're gonna have to thumb it back in that hole. And 
what a maddening, maddening experience. So just trust me when I say this, the cleaner you are before you grout, the faster and easier the grouting goes. <laughs> well, now that we got this sucker washed up, I can feel confident moving forward to finish my tile that I'm not going to have thin set that uh, advances and gets too dry. Man, there's, there's always something left, eh? Okay, uh, so I'm just going to go put the last few tiles on, and then we're going to do the, the front, and then we'll seal the floor, and then we'll put on the curb. the middle. Oh, bloody middle of this is need to be make an adjustment. I should have dry fit that before I put some on there. Come on, I'll try that again. Hey. Consistent pressure on that. If it was any more perfect, it wouldn't fit. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we're done in here. Finally. Well, guys, time to do the capping on this wall here. Oh, yeah. Just ran all those tiles through the wet saw. And I want to get a measurement 88 and an eighth. And then one in here goes to the floor. 89 and three eighths. 88 and an eighth. I'm gonna write this down. 89 and three eighths. Okay. There we go. Ah, always write it down. Um, I'm gonna just run out to the uh, chop saw and run these chromes through that because it is just a chromed aluminum and my carbide tip saw blade will take care of that. No problem, get a nice clean finish. Rinse my system. Nice and slow, make sure the wheel's up to full speed. Hold everything nice and tight and then lean over the top of the saw so nothing's flying in your face. And when you've cut through, pull the material away from the blade before you lift the saw blade back up so it doesn't catch an edge of the metal off that carbide tooth, okay? And that's how I do it. I'm going to cut this first tile at that height and I'm also going to cut high. <laughs> I'll be right back. One more trip to the saw. Hi, aye, aye. All right, let's get that in here. Bam. Okay. Now, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to start by just getting that post covered in thin set. It's really just as simple as scraping it off both sides of the tile. We're going to just gently set it in place into the thin set here. that and a couple of grooves okay it's going to take a bit of material to fill this in 
There we go. Oh, that's not the first one. I just finished doing that first one. There we go. Now we can build. What I'm going to do is clean some of that grout line out as I go. So I've got room for grout to go in there. And just a little tile trick here. Uh, I don't have one on me today, but when I was uh, doing tile for a living, we used a number one pencil. You know, like those little brown ones you used to use in school before they let you use a pen? <laughs> you can use a pencil right up there because there's no no metal parts if you don't have something like a living clip system on you. Okay, that is a great way to clean out a grout line. Okay, here we go. Now, put my groove in. I'm going to take another dollop in here, right down the middle. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to force this in. There we go. See, this doesn't squeeze out because you have th three different depths. You've got the depth to the metal, you've got the depth to the cement board, right? And then it goes back up again. So you comb the whole trowel, leave a dollop down the middle, and then when you press it in, what it does is it squeezes in behind the metal as well and bonds everything together, okay? And that is how you get a great corner with a nice grout line on each side on the back. So here's the lines that meet the metal, and that's the build out to get to the cement part. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And perfect. Now, it's my luck, right? I'm, I'm actually one tile short. I want to pick up where this leaves off and then cut this last piece, right? Because the grout line lines up with that pretty much right over here. But instead, I'm going to have to go like this. Set that metal, okay? And prep this to add that tile later. I got a half a pail of thin set here with my name on it, and I am not going to let it go hard while I'm waiting. Okay, so there's my spot. That's what I'm building off. I'll do this one a little bit differently. By setting like this, it'll hold weight, but it'll also be very easy to remove. Here we go. So here's what's going on. We use the laser level to set my line, but my floor has a slope. So if I leave my tile on that, I have a huge gap underneath here. So instead of doing that, I have my wedges. And I'm going to compensate with one wedge for every one of these grout lines, okay, until we get caught up. And that's all we're going to do. Okay, and by the time the tile line gets up to eye level, it'll all be perfect. It's a bit of a cheat, but since nothing is built perfect, especially in a mobile home, <laughs> you gotta have a few cheats up your sleeve, right? Now, tile is more about precision than even drywall, because drywall is the art of Deceiving people into thinking everything's smooth. <clears throat> You're not going to be in a perfect scenario every day of your life, that's for sure. So, got to be able to take the punch and bend with it and make some adjustments. I know if you have an option, like what would you do in this scenario? I'd love to hear in the comment section. Okay, 
I think I got here now. I'm pretty much back to level. I'm actually level here now. Yep. Yeah. That one just needs a little touch. A little touch more wedge. Perfect. Okay. Mission accomplished. Two and three quarters. Hell, I'm gonna need the ladder to get up here. Aren't I? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Well, that's the height of that I want, because that's the height minus grout line, right? Fantastic. And I'm about a quarter inch out on the slope. Scribe that. Mark my quarter, draw my new line. There, that'll make a nice tile. All right. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Sound effects and all. Eh? <laughs> this job is just never going to end if I. <laughs> Don't bloody well do it, eh? When did that an hour ago? <clears throat> We're gonna see if our first attempt here is gonna pass. Obviously not. See how square all this is? Or not square. <laughs> I'm about an inch past my metal there, which coincides with here. So let's try this. Let's see if that angle there works better. Yes, sir, it does. So that actually is now scribe this. Ah. Uh. There we go. Remember, I told you the shower is kind of a parallelogram. So that even though this is a straight wall, it's still got a bit of a twist to it. It's all right, we'll get it fixed up. One more time. Uh, I know you might think this is excessive, but because of the way that the waterproofing wraps at both ends, it's just so much easier where you're going to need to clean up. Okay? There. So, we'll do that. And we'll simply set it in. Now, I got a pretty aggressive slope on there right now. I want it to be just past the, the line. All right, so that's level. We just rock it, put our slope on there, and that thin set at this point is going to hold that there. Not too aggressive. We still have to put door track on. There, just past the line. That's a perfect one degree slope. Remember when you're working with um, these uh, natural stone sills, you want to use a white cement because they will die. They'll take on the color of any adhesive or thin set that you're using. So, using the uh, Schluter All Set White, again, the perfect cement for any scenario. I hate doing free ads for companies, but this is really going to be the best bet for you, you guys, so that you don't run into issues when you're building. There really just is no reason why you should ever have to use the gray anymore. All right, there we go. Mission accomplished. Okay. <laughs> so aside from the fact that I've got to go to the store and buy one more tile, so that I can cut these two pieces. I should probably get two. Yeah, I better get, I better get two. I'll maybe I'll buy a whole box and just stick one in storage here. Um, so I'll have to do that. Run a little strip for the backside under the sill as well. Uh, that's it for this video. In the next video though, guys, we're gonna talk about how to use the sealer on your stone and your grouting process, okay? 
very important to get all of these right. There's a lot of products on the market, a lot of options. Uh, I'll show you my favorites. Um, some of them are because they're really easy to use, and some of them because they offer you a superior finish and a superior seal against water getting in behind your stone. 100% uh, <laughs> of new home construction does not use a sealed grub. That's just the way the industry works. They're cheap. And so 99% of the bathrooms out there have got porous grout in them, and this is why they go moldy. So we're going to show you how to do this so you don't have that problem. All right, cheers till next time.